Welcome to the Reddit Chronicles. Today we will be reading an update from True Off My Chest, posted by One Top. I'm getting married in two weeks, and I am totally screwed update. Got to Marty's house a little after 10 a.m. He had just put his daughter down for a nap, and we had a long, frankly brutal talk in the kitchen. Basically, he suspected this for a couple of months now, but Evelyn has been very good at covering her tracks, obviously with the assistance of Sarah and a couple of their mutual friends. I unfortunately do not have all six months of text messages, just a couple of dozen screenshots I sent to myself from Sarah's phone, but I gave him what I have and offered to help him however I could. I am a field analyst in the Sioux department of a mid-sized insurer specializing in workers' compensation fraud, so I know a few things and a few people. Anyway, I am now working from my laptop in my almost brother-in-law's kitchen, trying to salvage whatever I can. I'm going to have to talk to Sarah this evening and get the word out as fast as I can to my friends and family now that I know I won't screw Marty over. So far I managed to rebook most of the honeymoon, although I had a problem with the ticket because Sarah was flying under her maiden name and our carrier has a surname rule for name changes. Anyway, they did allow me to cancel and get a partial refund and rebook to my sister who will be accompanying her two brothers and nieces to Florida in a couple of weeks. I'm holding off on canceling the venues until after I talk to Sarah because I don't want to tip anyone off until Marty gets his chance to confront Evelyn, but I will absolutely be letting my family and friends know this afternoon sometime and beg them to keep it close. I'm basically in a frenzy right now canceling stuff I can cancel, and I'm heading down to the bank in a few to open a new account and getting my bills pay sorted out. The finances, some people have mentioned them, but it should be pretty good. The mortgage is in my name since we were not married, and I have the bigger income, but Sarah did contribute about 20k versus my 60k towards the down payment. I will have to probably pay her out that money and some portion of the mortgage payments for the last 16 months, but it could be worse. I am going to go silent for a while. This post has already been circulating around TikTok and has gone way, way, way beyond what I thought it ever would when I was freaking out in the middle of the night. First off, I want to say something here, I do not hate Sarah. I don't approve of what she did, I frankly find it repulsive, and I'm shocked by uncovering how two-faced she can be in how she treats people, but I don't hate her. I am just incredibly sad about everything and the I'm screwed part of my post is really the short time frame I have to work under. Basically our relationship is in a state where I cannot get married to her, but we're supposed to get married in two weeks. Maybe if we had two months, or better yet, a year or so to work through this, my approach might be vastly different, but I don't have that luxury. I have to move now. I have to move now. There's just no way I can enter into marriage with the state our relationship is in now, so I'm not going to. End of discussion guys. Anyway, I will report back later tonight with how everything today went. Hopefully it will be less traumatic than I'm anticipating. It's about 8.30pm right now, and I'm writing this from my buddy's house. His name is Mark, and a former co-worker of mine that is also in the same field of work. As I mentioned in a previous update, I work as a field analyst in the SIU department of a decent-sized insurance carrier. For people who don't know what that is, I'm basically a private detective. My job is to investigate what we think might be fraudulent claims in regards to workers' compensation. Anyway, as I kind of hinted at, Marty asked for my help in finding out who the other guy was that Evelyn was cheating on him with. All we had to go on was a name, let's call him Jake. The first thing I did was not some major amount of sleuthing, it was basically just going through LinkedIn trying to find the guy through Evelyn's connections, but that brought up nothing, which I thought was strange. Marty had told me that Evelyn was supposed to go out for drinks tonight after work, and that she said she wouldn't be home until around 9 or 10. He didn't have to tell me what he suspected since I pretty much understood right away. I told him that I would help him, but he needed to come with me. 
I then contacted my buddy Mark, explained the situation to him, and had him agree to meet us later in the day. The first thing we did was drive over to Marty's parents' house so that they could watch their granddaughter. I don't know what Marty told them as I waited in the car. After that, we went to Evelyn's place of work, it's one of those large commercial strip mall type centers with all of these nondescript offices in a row and a large, non-gated car park. We drove around until we found Evelyn's car, and then I had Marty unlock it with the second set of keys. I then gave Marty a voice-activated recorder and a GPS tracker to place in the car. Once done with that, we left, parked a bit down the street, and waited for my friend to arrive and for Evelyn to leave the business. Mark shows up about 20 minutes later, hops in the car with us, and around an hour after that, Evelyn comes out of her office with two of her girlfriends and a tall, younger-looking man with sandy blonde hair. They are obviously holding hands, and I'm like, damn Evelyn, you're making it easy for me. I take a couple of pictures from the car and then wait for Evelyn to leave in hers, and I start tracking her. At first, I thought she might go right to a hotel or something, but she didn't, Instead, she drove to a reasonably nice bar and grill in a nice section of town and parked on the street. I drove by her as she was getting out of her car and entering the establishment and then found my own parking spot and went over the plan. First we sent Mark in, since no one knew him. He had basically two jobs first, try to get any compromising pictures he could of Evelyn and Jake, and second to be my alibi. Marty and I waited in the car for around 20 minutes until I got the first in the series of text messages from Mark. They were pictures of Evelyn and Jake making out in front of their two female co-workers. Marty's suspicions right, they were helping Evelyn hide the affair from him. He was obviously very upset and angry. Evidently one of the co-workers is married, and as a couple they are good friends with Marty and Evelyn both of them having toddlers around the same age. I ask Marty if that's enough for him, but he says he still really wants to know who this guy is. I try to tell him that we can find out later, but he's practically begging me at this point, so I tell him to wait, text Mark that I'm coming in, and then enter the bar myself. First thing I see is Evelyn and her crew laughing and drinking at one of those tall round tables near the front window as I enter. I stop for a moment, pretend to be surprised, and then call out to Evelyn. Evelyn, hi, what are you doing here? She's obviously shocked to see me, and everyone around her tenses up immediately. Evelyn quickly introduces me as her sister's fiancé and says that we are getting married in two weeks. There are a lot of congratulations from everyone. I thank them, and then stick out my hand to the blonde guy and introduce myself with my full name, hoping that he'll respond in kind. He does, and I'm a bit taken aback he's not named Jake. I introduce myself to everyone else and then tell Evelyn that I'm here to meet a co-worker. I wave to Mark and then excuse myself. Once I get over to Mark, I tell him the guy's name and we both whip out our phones and go to work. It doesn't take long for us to find him, he's got social media profiles and a couple of court case judgments against him. Everything sort of falls into place when we find out that Jake is his middle name. At this point, I'm basically just grateful that Evelyn isn't cheating on Marty with two different co-workers. Turns out that Jake is 26, married, and has a one-year-old daughter. This just keeps getting better, worse. Anyway, I text Marty the guy's name and I decide I want to push my luck and tell him to wait a few more minutes. Basically, I'm playing babysitter here at the bar. I'm totally visible to Evelyn and her crew, I can see out of the corner of my eye that no one is particularly happy about this, and my presence is really ruining the night. This is good. I let this go on for about 10 minutes, and then tell Marty to text Evelyn that he's spending the night at his parents' house with their daughter. It doesn't take long after that until I catch Evelyn taking out her phone, showing it to Jake, and then everyone deciding to pack up. Evelyn comes over to me, says goodnight, and asks me if Sarah and I want to come over for dinner this weekend. I smile and say that sounds like a great idea, and wish her and her co-workers a good night. Mark and I wait for them to leave, then pay our bill, and hurry back to the waiting Marty.
There's a bit of hesitation here because we don't know exactly what Evelyn was going to do. Like I half assumed she might have already booked a hotel room and was heading there, which would have made everything a lot more complicated and limited what I could do, but it turns out that tonight was probably meant to be just drinks at the bar, and it wasn't until Marty decided to spend the night at his parents that it turned into something more. Evelyn made a beeline for home, and we followed behind her way out of sight and parked down the street. It didn't take long after that until another car pulled into Marty's driveway, and we saw Jake get out, go up to the door, knock, and be greeted by Evelyn. They went inside together. Now at this point, it's about 7.30, and I have my own stuff to do tonight, and I think that as a friend, I've done pretty much all I can do for Marty, and he can handle the rest himself. I mean, I feel bad for the guy, definitely, but I don't want to get any more involved in this drama than I already am, and being the wingman for him, while he confronts his cheating wife, is a bit much for me considering my situation. Marty says it's fine, that he'll do the rest of it himself. Guess he's more of a man than you thought, Evelyn. He goes to Evelyn's car, retrieves my gear, and we bid each other goodbye. That was almost two hours ago. I did get one text message from Marty saying it was done and he was going to his parents' house, for real this time, but my phone hasn't been blowing up so I don't know what's been going on with Evelyn, and I've been at Mark's since then. I think that basically concludes my part in Marty's story. If he was smart and listened to my advice, he was recording with his phone when he entered the house. I'll find out later. Anyway, my biggest priority now is to head home and tell Sarah that the wedding is off. She's almost 100% going to take it badly, there's no way she won't. But like I said, I just can't get married to her right now. I don't know what the future holds for us, or if we will be done with each other or not, but definitely we are not getting married anytime soon. Well, I had the talk with Sarah last night. It was pretty insane. I'm honestly burnt out and still exhausted, even though I took another sick day and slept in until almost a quarter to 11. Sleep deficit is real. I know everyone is thirsty for updates, but as much as it's therapy for me to write them, I am just absolutely drained, and as you may have noticed, I don't know how to be short, just call it a character trait from my profession and the endless amount of minutia-filled reports I've written. I will give the TLDR, and I promise to do a proper update later. Long story short, I came home to talk to Sarah about cancelling the wedding and found her comforting Evelyn on the couch. I almost turned around and walked out but didn't. Words were exchanged. Tears were had. People got really angry, and the cops were called. I collapsed and slept for like 10 hours and my phone is practically glowing from the heat of a bajillion unread messages and missed calls. If it vibrates any more, I'm going to take it to Evelyn's office and charge 10 bucks a minute to sit on it. Thank you for listening to the Reddit Chronicles. Follow for more content.